Hi, this is Becky Gromlick with the Watercolor Classroom. Today we're going to paint this lovely eucalyptus arrangement thanks to Paint My Photo, a reference photo. I'm going to start with the back background and I uh, am going to just make my paper wet. There's just a tiny bit of pink in my brush, so I'll get that out of there. I'm going around the vase. but I'm not gonna go around each leaf. So my paper is wet, and I'm gonna start with this color that has a little bit of rust, quinacridone rust, gamboge, and phthalo in it. It's, I'm gonna start at this end. I need it so light that I'm rinsing my brush off. I just want this little bits of color. And dip it again, and keep going on this very light color. goes past this shadow and goes up into here. Now my paper's super wet, so I need to let it dry a little bit before I impose those uh, reflections on there. And then it turns a little bit bluer as it gets up in here. Well, that was a little bit greener. And now that's very dark for there, so we'll spread it out as quickly as we can. Rinsing my brush and going across. And we end up with a blue color over here that's almost just a little bit purple. Still very subdued. There's a shadow that comes up and goes across like that. It's greener as it goes up. And the rest of that I want to just run a little bit. So I'm going to tip it. I don't want it to run down into this part from this line. So I think I'll just make it run this way instead. I did a little bit more brushing than is preferred when I'm getting a bloom that way. And I'm going to sharpen up that edge a little bit. Don't Sharp is a harsh word. I don't really want it to be sharp. I really just want it to stop running right there. I don't want to dry my paper until this has had a chance to spread out some. I've mixed all four colors to make the color for these shadows. It needs to be very watery because they're light. And the paper is still wet, and so it's running. Probably more than I would choose. The way I deal.
Yeah, going back over these edges before they dry all the way and just softening them a little bit. I had planned to do wet on wet, but I had got my paper so wet that it was just uh, stretching out forever. And so I'm gonna go back and just get the edges a little bit. I want there to be that soft look. And in between, I'm gonna fill in um, so that those softened areas that I just softened don't have another edge. Some of the greens, which is uh, quinacridone rust and phthalo blue, here for this bluish green. And then I've mixed a little bit of gamboge into that mixture over here for those few places where there is a lighter color. And we're gonna start on these leaves. This phthalo blue is a very staining color and so um, I'm gonna go with some caution. I'm gonna keep this here where I can see it and try to get the different varying shades of these. Lovely heart-shaped leaves. Maybe this could be a Valentine a card of some kind. I'm going to go down and get a little bit greener as I get down. Dried my brush so that I can blend those together because I don't necessarily want them all to look this teal and this is one of the darker ones. So this is still just rust and blue up here. Wiping my brush to move it down with, a, with less paint. and then getting into this yellower color. Now this leaf is way lighter. And so I'm gonna have a whole new spot with water mixed in with it. And a not too wet of a brush. It's still darker than it needs to be, and across the top it's even lighter. And then this brush, I mean leaf, it's just almost not there, and it's got a hint of gray. And so I'm just gonna put a touch of the red into that mixture to get this hint of gray in here. And that hint of gray makes it look further away. I'm making the leaf a little bit, go over a little bit further because it's just right along the edge of that shadow. Paper the whole thing, and there we go. That put it into the background. So all these leaves, they're all slightly, slightly different colors from each other and that's part of the charm. If you can get these different colors in here, like this one's quite blue. It just adds um, something to it that <clears throat> is perhaps more like nature. I'm not gonna paint over the stem here. The stem's in the background and I want it to stay in the background. I wants to say all of these leaves should be heart-shaped, 
but with the way the light hits them or the camera hits them, they aren't all heart-shaped from the angle that we see them. to paint the base and I'm going to need some of this dark color for this edge over here. I'm going to paint some just plain blue right over that to get it dark enough. That's the darkest color on the palette. I definitely want the vase to look round. And then as it comes out, it switches from browns to just rust. quickly get into some of this rust so that I don't get sharp, sharp edges. And then there's a little bit of gold mixed with the rust uh, also. And I'm going to get into some of that right away because of the edge, not because I have the perfect color mixed. And I'm putting stripes in here as I paint, and I don't really want stripes. So I'm going to switch to a softer brush. This is another quill brush. And the quill brushes, uh, they hold a lot of water, but they don't really leave marks behind. Or not much, anyway. Especially the fake squirrel quill brushes. See how much smoother that got instead of all the scraped brush mark. Now the rest with the pink does make a pretty color, um, but it needs a little bit of uh, gamboge in it to accomplish some of these colors in here. That's better. One half of them is a reddish rust. It has quite a bit of the pink color in it. And the rust both. Some of this is a lighter color, so I'm just going to use the same color and water it down. Oops, that was the wrong step. This was the one that was lighter.
to soften that edge there and then make this petal pop. I keep calling the petals. Leaves pop forward. And this one can become quite blurred because it's further back. So I'm agitating it more. And then I'll get rid of that second line that formed too. I'm just doing a wash over this whole area to make all of them blend into the background a little bit. Okay. When I sign my name, I use tape because I can't draw a straight line or beans. And if it's a light area like this and I have a marker, and I'll put my signature down here. I'm making it quite an understated signature using a light gray. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe and if you and the like button and the bell so you get notifications. And if you have any comments, I'd love to hear from you. Just uh, ask questions or whatever you would like to say. Thank you so much for watching.